All right, guys, so let's just jump into the content here. Now, this is the super sped up time lapse version of around six times speed for the most part. And we're just gonna blast through this so you can get a lot of information real quick. And then shortly after this video, I'll also create just a real time a video of me sculpting and uh, detail of painting one of these awesome little uh, moss covered rocks in more of a real time video that is really slowed down and quite a bit longer than just this right here. But uh, for those who just want the time lapse version, this is gonna be that. So I'm using DOS air dry clay here. Uh, and this was actually kind of started from a different project here where I was testing air dry over foams. Uh, so if you wanna check that out, it's under the tips and tricks under my YouTube channel. So we're just completely covering the foam with the DOS air dry clay. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, aluminum foil just in different shapes to kind of texture the overall rock structures. Now this is again in a time-lapse version, so you can kind of see that I'm just really quickly just applying some nice details, kind of smoothing out the high spots, just like a rough would be naturally. I've shaped these all different ways as you can see here, and then the next stage is to go ahead and wait for them to completely dry, uh, and then we're gonna go straight into a Mars black base. So we'll push all this out of the way and we'll get to that awesome content here. So here you can see you can just sculpt these into any shape and size that you really need and by completely encapsulating the foam uh, you know in a little kind of capsule it really does add a lot of strength to the overall rock structures uh, i really was uh, enjoying the process of making these and i look forward to making a lot of these in the future for say like some of our rc uh, military trucks whether they're you know pulling or uh, moving rocks in the bed of the trucks it's just kind of cool so we're gonna layer these onto just a little uh, pie cover tray here. Uh, I like these uh, for a lot of projects, whether I'm putting paint on them or just kind of using them to move things around, keeping things organized. And we're gonna roll into the Mars black base. Now, a lot of you know that I like to coat a lot of my items in the Mars, uh, Mars black base. This is a basics paint from uh, Michaels. So it's nothing super extravagant. It's just the same basics uh, Mars black that I've been using for probably over a year to two years. Uh, so I really don't have to buy it very often, but when I do, uh, I don't want to spend too much money on just the base color when I'm just going to apply a lot of vibrant, nice looking, more expensive paints over those. So sit back and enjoy as we go ahead and apply Mars Black to all of these amazing little rocks. I will say here that it is imperative just to take your time. I'm using a gloved hand on my left hand and I'm just using my paintbrush on the right. Uh, and then that way, any paint that gets rubbed off between my fingers of the rock, that it was just never meant to be get there to begin with in my, in my book. So, so don't go over crazy with it. Just uh, take your time, enjoy it. And if you have to stop and come back later to finish things up, you can do so. And just also make sure that you're kind of pushing that, that uh, Mars Black into any like grooves and recesses that the, the rock may have had sculpted into it during the sculpting process. Uh, and if little itty bitty pieces are missing out and you feel like, well, I can come back and do that later, you're indeed right. You can always come back and uh, the later dry brushing layers and add more colors or kind of detail in with some washes to kind of hide any imperfections that you missed. So here's what they look like now. Now you can immediately go straight from this into your colored paints if you'd like to. If you want to hit it with a heat gun, you can do so really quickly, but I went ahead and let them dry for a few days and then I, I, I finally picked them back up to uh, finish up this project. All right, so setting that aside there, as you can see here, I went ahead and made the largest rock already. Now I'm gonna post that in a real time video and it's around 25 minutes long or so. That way you can really see how long it actually legitimately took me to make one of these rocks. Um, and if, you're, if you have all your colors laid out and you're not having to get things out as you go along, 
and it does, uh, you know, turn into like an assembly line type of thing. So just be aware that uh, I'm about to blast through these last three rocks here and you'll see that it does go quite quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Mars Black and a Titanium White mixture here. Now you pull out as much Mars Black and then gently add in your uh, Titanium White to the overall mixture. Uh, and then the more Titanium White you add, the, the higher the highlights will be. This is a partial dry brush and a partial kind of coverage. I, I just wanna get some kind of like a, a rock texture onto the overall structure. Uh, if you do a partial dry brush, you know, not putting too much paint on, not like pushing it into the recesses, then a lot of that Mars Black does kind of peep through uh, and it really does give it a lot of contrast here. I'm also slowly introducing a little bit of burnt umber and uh, I almost said raw sienna. I would have made myself a liar raw umber and burnt umber into this and i'm kind of brushing that in just where i feel like the rock may need a little bit more organic or earth texture to it you know not all all rocks are the same texture or the same uh overall medium so we want to make sure we bring in a lot of different types of uh textures and colors to kind of you know make it look a little bit realistic obviously if you look closely at these you can tell that they're painted with acrylics and they're they have moss uh flocking on them but i, I just still want them to look very good and I think that's everybody's goal when they're doing rocks like this or whether you're uh, making them out of foam and then mod podging over them or, or you're making them out of clay like I am here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit them with a, this, at this point, this, this kind of, um, well, I'll, I'll say that this wash that I'm spraying here does evolve with time. If you check a lot of my other videos, I always use the same wash bottle unless I really want to change the color a lot. Uh, and that wash will change depending on the project that I am having uh, done at the time. So it, although it is more of a raw sienna look to it now, uh, in previous projects, it has been, you know, a darker Mars Black, it's changed to a raw umber. Uh, it, it changes depending on the projects that I have and what colors I add more into the bottle with rubbing alcohol and, and dilutions to, to give the color that I need for the project. I don't think there's a, a need for a thousand different little bottles of wash when you can just adapt and change the ones that you have. I think maybe one or two max maybe three, but um, anything above and beyond that is, it, you're really, really nitpicking over your colors. Uh, and it's a dirty wash for a reason. You really don't have to go above and beyond just to apply a great wash to these things. Uh, let it be organic, let it be natural. Uh, and as long as it's uh, uh, earthly colors, I think you're okay. So then I'm gonna go ahead and use some Mod Podge here and I'm just gonna gently layer that on. I'm not caking it on too thickly and I'm used to using a very fine powder flocking. This is the same powder flocking that you can buy in the bags at most uh, hobby stores as well as Michael's uh, and it is a very vibrant green. I usually mainly use this for an over uh, uh, under uh, coat if I'm gonna go over it with something else or if I wanna stain this in a different color. So we're just gonna put this on very random. Uh, make sure you kind of put it in the shadowed areas. You know, a lot of moss doesn't completely, truly like to climb into sunny areas. I'm not saying that it can and won't. I'm just saying it likes to like cool, damp, um, little, little, little recesses uh, of wildlife. So usually where you have a lot of moisture and things like that is where you'll find a lot of that. And usually that's around the bottom of the rock and kind of creeping up over the edges. That way you can also save some of those highlights for those top spots of the rock, kind of make them look like they're like glistening in the sun. What do you think? Things looking pretty good so far. All right, so lastly, we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of a thicker flocking. Now, this is some leftovers that I had from previous projects. I was unable to find flocking in the area and I just didn't feel like ordering it online. So at one point during another project, I had actually bought the Walmart version of, um, it's like a planting flock. It's very, very coarse, it's in sheets, and I went ahead and turned it up and made it into something a little bit more powdery. Uh, and this is the remnants of that. So just be aware you can get any kind of like uh, coarse flocking that you want to add more texture to your rocks. But this is just what I had nearby and I thought that, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and use this since I already have it turned up and kind of sitting off to the side. I'm very specific in, in trying to use a little bit more of that powder just so it can kind of diversify the overall flocking colors from below. Uh, kind of change up the tone, maybe make it look a little bit more depth to it. 
I really do hope y'all enjoyed this video. As we run through some of the glamour shots and some of the awesome, uh, you know, uh, uh, HD clarity uh, pictures that we have stored up here for this project, uh, just remember that if you want to try this, definitely tag us uh, in the video. Show us your favorite way to make rocks, and I, I hope to make a few more in different colors and textures here in the future. Look how great these little bad boy turned out. Now I am gonna come in later on and I'll probably coat these with some UV resin just to give them a little bit of protection just cause I'm gonna use these out and about quite a bit, whether it's in the RC cars or whether it's just for a different project. They'll probably sit on my shelf for a little, little while there and then I'll kind of change up and decide what I wanna do with them. As always, thank you guys for watching. I really do enjoy making this type of content and I really do enjoy it when you also enjoy it. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Leave a comment below telling me if this is a, a good method for you to make awesome, realistic looking clay rocks. Or let me know what your favorite method is. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later. Thank you for watching. Check out all of these awesome videos. I got issues in my head.